I like was complaining about pains probably from running. When I exercise, I feel worse? What's that about? I'm Hannah Kaiser and this is The Bandwagon. Woo! This past week, I bandwagoned the Angels and Mike Trout continued to be so good. How good was he? That opposing pitchers showered him with affirmations on and off the field. Dad is also enjoying his newfound Angels fandom, but that could be because his primary option is the Phillies who are an incredible free fall. That's part of the problem, actually, with rooting for a team that's got really high expectations, which applies to the Angels for as long as they have Trout, too. And that's why this week, I'm bandwagoning the Rangers, yeah. <laughs> who are kind of in a weird spot standing-wise. They're winning, they're well above 500, and they have basically no shot of beating out the Astros for the AL West title. But actually, this is all very good, since one of the biggest problems in the sport right now is the divide between big market teams and the tanking teams who are cheaping out in the name of a rebuild. The Rangers, however, are the rare team that embodies baseball's disappearing middle class. Literally, they have the payroll closest to the major league median. And what that looks like in practice is that they're one of the only teams that signed the sort of aging B-list stars who are getting squeezed out of the current system this offseason. Lance Lynn? You've never heard of this man. You couldn't pick him out of a lineup. <gasps> he yeah. He looks like the husband of a female protagonist married mom friend. Like he's fine and eventually you realize that the secondary characters are happy in their domestic life. But he was basically cast because the character description said dad bod. He married what <laughs> This guy, who the Rangers signed as a free agent over the winter, currently leads the American League in war for pitchers. My God, is baseball a sport for the everyman. A similar thing happened to Hunter Pence, who seemed extremely done last year when he hit only 226 at 35 years Aww. old. Which would have been very sad, as he is an inspiration to all marionettes that they too can become real boys someday and even play professional baseball. Yeah. <laughs> Take that, Hunter! Sometimes I think about how there was this kid in my high school. He insisted that everybody call him Showtime. And I feel like that guy grew up to be Hunter Pence. That energy where you're not cool, but you have so much confidence you're pulling it off. Shout out to Showtime! <laughs> That's Hunter Pence, right? He signed a free agent contract with his hometown team, and now at 36, he's an All-Star Game finalist with a 962 OPS. That's yeah. good. That's good. 962. Not everyone on the Rangers, though, is a new old man. Elvis Andrus has spent the first 11 years of his career in Arlington. Lincoln, and with a contract that runs through 2023 is likely to be a one-team career player. Which I love, although not as good as notable team friendships. Which brings me to Andres and Adrian Beltre, probably the most notable baseball buddies of all time. Beltre retired at the end of last year, and so you can't really root for him anymore, but the two did engage in adorable antics at his number retirement recently. We actually talked about this! Adrian no. Beltre doesn't like when people touch his head, and they touch his head because of that. <laughs> good recap! We did not, however, mention Elvis Andres in that segment, even though he was the one who did the head touching. Speaking of touching and friends, okay. we will play a clip in which two men on the Rangers greet each other by grabbing each other's dick and balls. <laughs> the dick and balls grabber on the left is dinger smashing dude Joey Gallo, and the dick and ball grabber on the right is dinger smashing dude Nomar Mazara, who specializes in extra long dingers, 500 Whoa! feet to be exact. <laughs> Also, we gotta talk about the renderings of their forthcoming ballpark for next season. It's like, why is this part of their promotional material for being published for public consumption? It's just like, get excited for next year when you cannot be there, I guess, while this guy luxuriates in a central subterranean spa and watches maybe highlights of himself completely alone except for a middle-aged clubhouse attendant. Very strange all around. Root for the Rangers, one of the top three most popular sports franchises with that name. <laughs> I was gonna make a hockey joke here, but as we've established, uh, not a fan of hockey. What's hockey? Speaking of, Fan, not a fan. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Pitching with a broken nose. Max Scherzer, pitch with a broken nose. He looked really cool. He should look into getting that tattooed on his face, actually. Very intimidating, which is part of his whole thing. So Max Scherzer broke his nose while bunting in batting practice. Should have been taking batting practice seriously. Instead, he was just phoning it in and it poof, right up into his nose. Fan of pitching with a uh, black eye, especially if you deserve it. Centering the pill. I went to Major League Baseball's owners meetings last week where Rob Manfred addressed a room of reporters and finally kind of acknowledged that the ball is different and that's why we're getting way too many home runs. And one of the reasons that they've come up with is that people are getting too good at making the baseballs and so the pill, which is the center of the ball, is too centered and previously it had been slightly off and that caused the ball to wobble and all that wobbling increased drag, which made it slower. And now that it's better, it goes <laughs> Although, the ball is more aerodynamic. I guess I'm not a fan of this. Here's my question. I guess it's good that we're making them better, but then we should make the ballparks bigger. Manager ejections. I love manager ejections. Gabe Kapler had his first ejection as a Phillies manager. Yeah, fan. I like managers' ejections for two reasons. Number one, they underscore how unimportant managers are. You can just leave and the game continues as if nothing happened. <laughs> 
And number two, the people of Philly loved this. They went crazy. I think it's good. He should be pissed. They've lost like a thousand games in a row and they're supposed to be good. Managers wearing uniforms. I think, in fact, all sports, the coaches should wear the uniforms. Three. Right? Might be weird basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Fan. It is much weirder that the guys who are actually the athletes in baseball wear belts than it is that the managers wear baseball uniforms. I never wear a belt when I do an athletic activity. The Hills New Beginnings. I didn't even watch The Hills the first time. What? Around. Should I watch The Hills? No. <laughs> Chuck Norris. I don't know anything about Chuck Norris. We're Van Rangers. Rangers. Is he a ranger? Uh, Walker, Walker, Texas, Texas Ranger. ranger. Yes. Specifically yeah. Chuck Norris? He roundhouse kicked the owner into naming the team. Oh. Uh, he roundhouse kicked Judge Bush? In that case, fan. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for Fan of the Week? We're doing a new segment. Fan of the Week! It's called Fan of the Week, and it's this kid. He dab, 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 and then the camera is still on him, and he doesn't even, like, register that it's like, oh, shit. he's like, all right, I got more of my roller deck. He just goes right back to it and he breaks out another dance move, which I can't even do. This kid's got like Hunter Pence confidence, right? Yeah. He looks amazing because he's got commitment. Yeah. He's committed yeah. to the bit. Home proposal. Let's do it. The Rays, currently of Tampa Bay, are not going to play half or even a significant portion of their games in Montreal. Not next season, not the one after, and not even in 2028 when the lease at their current stadium expires. They won't because they can't, because how could they? And yet, at the owners' meeting in New York last week, MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred explained that he had given the Rays ownership permission to explore doing just that. The end game here is not an international home address, but rather a chance to negotiate with those two cities and any others that might be willing to build owner Stu Sternberg the new stadium that, at an estimated $800 million net worth, he simply can't pay for himself. This isn't MLB threatening to take away the Rays if fans won't go see them. This is MLB intentionally inciting chaos and confusion for the sake of baiting politicians into diverting funds from things like schools and roads to stadiums. And the people who stand to lose the most are the fans in all these cities who actually care whether or not the team comes or goes. Which is a pretty shitty way to treat the people who underwrite this entire industry with their emotional investment. It's old hat to say that billionaires should buy their own stadiums. But if they won't, if instead they insist on a bailout from people for whom the return on their investment is merely the opportunity to pay even more money to actually consume the product, then they should at least have the f***ing gall to ask for it honestly. Yeah! This week, bandwagoned the Rangers. Uh, maybe I'll go check them out in Arlington right here. It's very hot. I love to be too hot. It's one of the things I'm a fan of. Other things I'm a fan of. Max Scherzer looks super cool. The black eye looks less cool bunting the ball into his nose and breaking it and getting a black eye. Fan of manager ejections. I'm sure I would be a fan of Chuck Norris, but I don't know anything about him. Sorry, Chuck Norris, don't beat me up. Hear that you're strong? And a huge fan of our fan of the week, Kid Who Dabs, because, as it turns out, he is much better at dancing than I am. Dab is back! Dab is back, baby! <laughs>